so welcome everyone. It's so nice to be here and see everyone. Kind of full. So I'm Renata Havanelli. I have been working for the Chorus team now almost for three years and for Hatch Hatch 2. And today I'm here to talk a little bit about CoreOS and OS Build, a kind of an integration that we did between the teams and to present some use cases as well. So in today's talk, I'm going to go a little bit about what is Hatch Hatch CoreOS, uh, Fedora CoreOS, what is why it's cool to learn how to build that, what is actually CoreOS assembly, why it is used, uh, how you actually build CoreOS systems, the integration that you did with the OS build team, a Podman v5 use case that you had that you used that as well, and most importantly, how you get involved to help us. <laughs> okay, what is Hatch Hatch and Fedora CoreOS? So I'd like to ask here, who is using Fedora CoreOS today in the room? Oh, quite a lot. How about Hatch Hatch CoreOS? OpenShift, maybe? OK, what I want to focus here is what make CoreOS systems unique and different from the other distributions. So if it's the first time that we're provisioning CoreOS system, the difference that you notice is if you don't use Ignitio, we will completely fail to access the system after you provision that. So to manage to access the system, you need to at least use Ignitio to config users to put uh, your SSH key or even the password. That's a requirement. You can access the system if you don't use Ignitio. Uh, the second main feature that you have, it's self-maintaining. So it will provide automatic updates. So if you are using Fedora CoreOS, that means that every two weeks you get a new release and your system will automatically update. If you don't disable Zincari, Zincari comes uh, automatically enabled for you. So today you have three streams. We have the test of the veil where everything news go on. And then after two weeks, this string go to next. More two weeks is go to stable. Another thing that's uh, common to Fedora Quest system that it's based on RPM OS3. Uh, also, with all those releases that you do, you got a uh, nice input from the community. Which people always come to us to provide feedback, to provide bugs, because our release process quite off quickly. Uh, in as well, Fedora CoreOS, you can use standalone or you can use as a close OKD and such. But what is this difference from Fedora CoreOS to Hatch Hatch CoreOS? So Hatch Hatch CoreOS is the enterprise version for Fedora CoreOS to start with. It is it cannot be used as a standalone. Hatch Hatch CoreOS is a component of OpenShift. You can only use that via OpenShift. And as is part of OpenShift, it follows the release cycle of the OpenShift itself. And it also uses the help packages where Fedora CoreOS, yes, use the Fedora packages. And why to learn how to build that? First, it's nice for you to understand the components of the system and to build your own image. Sometimes you get a lot of questions about how I can change kernels and stuff like that, how I can put that file. So it's nice to understand and you can have your own image, your own way to do things. OK, but how we do that? So. We have it, the CoreOS assembler that is our main tool where it provides every single necessary steps and tool to create our builds. So it's basically uh, a containerized image. So we have an image that's inside the CoreOS assembly repository. And you need this image to accomplish the build process because it has everything that it needed inside that. It's a multi-platform, so it's um, manifesting the register. So if you are in S390X, it's power, you just need to type pod main pool, it will get the right platform region for you, so you can use that. Uh, it's also responsible for to create our artifacts for us, KMU, live images, metal, and all cloud specific ones, as well to provide our tests, validation, um, 
do the releases and the, the push process to us. Okay, but how that is done? So, as I mentioned, everything is inside the Coras container, uh, as we call COSA. And once you have the Coras assembly container, you also need to have the configurations from the OS. In this case, for Fedora Coras, we use Fedora FCOS configurations. For Hatch Hatch Coras, it will be the OpenShift OS. And also, the RPMs that will be fetched could be Fedora or even Hell. And once you have everything there, we'll trigger our build via COSA. You call COSA build, and it will start the build for you. And what it basically does, it creates an OS3 commit. That's the initial process. If from that OS3 commit, we will generate all the images, cloud images, and so on. And after that, we will also trigger our automated tests. We have a bunch of them. Sometimes we launch uh, image clouds to validate them, and then we release them. OK, but where OS build fits on that? <laughs> so basically, both products kind of do almost the same thing. And you have a huge intersection between them from what CoreOS Assembler is doing and what OS Build Team is doing. And essentially for us, what we understand that would be useful to us is the part of the GISC image, how the GISC images are created. Because essentially, it's, it is a duplicate work you're doing. You're doing the same thing that OS Build is doing. So we decide to join for us, let's say. Um, give that part to the OS team to care of for us, and then we'll adjust that to our needs. So I, I put together a couple of things that are related to OS builds. If you want to understand more about that, we had some panels in the past, yesterday, I think, with Kiwi, OS build, Achilles there, so you can ask him <laughs> uh, to understand a little bit more that. It's manifest-based, and the amazing thing about OS build is that we have essentially three ways in how we can get the disk image at the end. Uh, you can use an OC archive and provide to us build that will, at the end, give you a disk image. You can use a OS3. That's the way you're doing FCOS, year cost today. And you can also provide a container image to that. And that will also provide, at the end, images for you. OK, um, that is now how we are doing. The previous uh, picture that I saw, it was how it used to be. And now, as you can see, OS build is also part of the, our CoreS container. So it is inside CoreS now. And that part that used to be our responsibility for the disk image is now responsibility of the OS build. You do have all manifest and all necessary things there are unique to us inside Quest Assembler. And we'll do the same. We'll build to create the S3 commit. But once you reach the S3 commit, COSA will call OS build. OS build is installed on that. And then OS build will provide to us the disk images. So right now, we are not doing everything, because that's a work in progress. So we are doing Metal, Kimu, Hyper-V, GCP, Apple HV, and we are also doing that for four different platforms. And since you have this, this transition phase, and also the same pipeline supports both FCOS and RCOS, we, we essentially to enable that, we create an environment variable that you need to set up to make the SBUs take care of this part. And that's how things are actually been doing right now for FCOS totally, and for RCOS, we start doing that uh, starting in 416. But if you're going to give a try that for F, because it's already there. OK, um, how about Podman v5? So guess what? Podman machine is F cost. So we got a request from the Podman team to help them to do some customizations, because they have a specific need where they need to match versions and our listed image didn't quite work for them, so they need a couple of customizations there. There is a bunch of ways to achieve that. And uh, essentially, 
Uh, you can use RPM overrides, you can use your layer, a bunch of ways. But the coolest thing is the only thing that the Podman team needs to do was a Docker file. They took our image and then they did some RPM style overrides, remove the files, add whatever they need to do and provide that file to us. From that file, we built that push to, uh, to a raster, and from there, we call it a chorus assembler. And chorus assembler took that and passed to OS build. And OS build managed to create all necessary artifacts that the Podman team needed at the time. And then we also uh, run a couple of automated tests for the key MO image, since they are also the um, Apple TV that we don't have hard and other things, but at least for the key MO image, you did a couple of validations before create a um, KIO manifest with all two platforms that Podman team needed that were x86 and R64, and you push that to the register. So right now we are doing uh, some daily staging builds, and then when they need, they will push to the official raster. So you probably already saw this picture in the conference. That's the repository for machine OS in Podman. And as you can see, you have two main, let's say, base images that are the Docker file they provide, and also have three artifacts per platform. Uh, okay, how do you try that? So for OS build, uh, we did some manifest there. If you want to, you can go to the OS build, clone that, look at the manifest that were added for the core S team, and try to run that by yourself to understand a little bit how OS build work, how the manifest is done, the stages, and so on. I put an example here. So OS build work with stages. For example, in the beginning, you can see how you set up the disk and so on. And if you want to give a try that in your core S assembler, uh, the thing that you need to do is to export the um, environment variable to set that up. And it will only work right now with OS3. But you can trigger a couple of things that should manage it to get the other ways that I explained. OK, how do I get involved? Uh, we have the uh, week meetings, if you want to draw in matrix, that's a nice way to start. Also have a forum issues, you can reach the team in matrix, or you can send me an email to get involved and help you. And I think it's pretty much that. I still have three minutes to spare if you want to ask questions. <laughs> Any questions? No, Podman Machine OS, the, the operation, oh, I'm sorry, the question. The question was if I can create Podman Machine. Uh, using Podman, Core OS, container on macOS. If you can create FCOS via Podman Machine. No, the Podman Machine operating system is, is FCOS. Uh -huh. <laughs> Colin? <laughs> I think the beginning was quite challenging for us to understand. Um, sorry, uh, the question is uh, what were the challenges that you uh, had to do everything? Uh, I think the challenge in the beginning was to understand how OS build work as, as we were talking today about the way they do the boot hoot and stuff. And the beginning was a little bit trick, but the OS build team helped us a lot. And I think things are going smooth now. And I also had that issue with the boot D stuff that took a while for us to understand and update, you know, Glubby, get uh, the white, uh, Envivars for kernel, it's stuff that are unique to Core S, let's say, but now things are, are going well, I would say. <laughs> Anything else? So I think that's it. Thank you so much for <laughs> attending. <laughs>